episode of the couch i keep i kept calling it a podcast but it's not it's an episode on our channel um so welcome thank you for checking us out my name is sharon singh my friends are she and her i'm the program coordinator here at mosaic i'm super excited to have our wonderful staff and uh guests on our podcast on our Episode. See, I knew I was going to do that. Um, we're going we're gonna to be talking about cultural appropriation. Halloween is right around the corner. And so, uh, yeah, this is a very timely conversation. Um, I'm going to ask folks to introduce themselves now, and then we'll jump right into it. So we'll start here. So I'm Monica. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm a third year bio major, and I am a cultural programmer here at Mosaic. Hello, my name is Chloe Queen Kramer. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm a third year sociology major with a minor in legal studies, and I'm part of Associated Students as the Director of Academic Affairs. Hi, I'm Dr. Patience Bryan. I'm the Director for Black and African American Equity in the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, which is in the Presence Office, and my pronouns are she and they. Hello, my name is Jace. I use they them pronouns. Um, I'm a cultural programmer at Mosaic. I'm a third year sociology major and I have escaped from CS, which I feel like <laughs> is important information every time I introduce myself. I feel like that should be your outgoing message, like your signature in your emails. <laughs> escaped from, from CS. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so um, what does cultural appropriation look like in 2021? I feel like a big part of it is like social media. Um, I'm gonna touch a little bit on like the Kardashians because like the Kardashians, that's like, um, I feel like a lot of the money that they make is through cultural appropriation, mm. um, especially with black fishing. They do a lot of that um, with the products that they sell, even like, Kendall Jenner with her tequila business kind of exploiting Mexican culture. Mm. So what is black fishing? Um, so it's usually when white women try to um, say they enhance their features, but mm. they do it so they look similar to black women. Mm. So this could be through hair and makeup or just like using a darker complexion for um, like foundation mm. and stuff. Yeah. It's essentially like cosplaying as yeah. another race. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, which is kind of, that's how I feel cultural appropriation looks like um, in this day and age. Is uh, I feel like we see a lot of, especially on social media, so I'll mm -hmm. piggyback off of what you said. I see a lot of white women who have drastically changed their appearance to look less white and more or less ethnic, mm -hmm. um, oftentimes cosplaying as black women or women of color in general. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And the thing about it is, um, when people ask, what's the big deal? It's like, we're showing you all, like we love braids, we love mm -hmm. um, having a darker skin. It's like, well, you can do it without the responsibility and the burden that mm -hmm. sometimes comes with being in these bodies that we have. Mm -hmm. And so you can, you can wash off your face, you can wash your face, you can straighten your hair, and when you walk out the door, folks won't hurt, they hold their purses when you stand next to them. Mm. But also you see it in this, in food. So recently, I watch a lot of YouTube, mm -hmm. and a YouTube crowd was watching, it's like, oh, I heard about this new bowl. I'm like, what, is, what, are, what are they doing? And basically bashing up uh, sam salmon, putting in rice, and putting the seaweed, I'm like, mm -hmm. so basically you're making a deconstructed sushi roll mm -hmm. that I can see other, my Asian identified brothers eat every day. And now yeah. this white woman is saying, oh, I created this bowl. This Asian oh, bowl. no. Mm -hmm. so, like, keep touching on that, the trend was start. This started by like so, uh, I some Asian woman like just showing like what she eats mm -hmm. daily, uh -huh. and now white women are starting to copy it. And, like, oh my god! But honestly, it's not even that fancy. Like, like <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I did the other day. I I I made salmon. I like I flaked it and I made them into rice balls, which uh -huh. that's the typical like process. 
It's super simple. It's been around for a very long time. It has Japanese roots. Mm -hmm. And the fact that white woman's like, oh, this is so exotic. And like, look at this amazing thing I'm doing. And it's like, they don't even credit the original, mm -hmm. um, the original person who's been doing this. And she, like, honestly, that's all her TikToks are. I had a freshman who was 17 to explain this to me. So like, <laughs> <laughs> so my knowledge of this is like very like fresh and like yeah, kind of like right. secondhand. But like, right. a lot of it is just like, the way people see a lot of these things as exotic and like, oh my god, it's mm -hmm. like, it's like, it's our daily lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, I have a similar example to that um, with banh mi. So my mother's Vietnamese, so that makes me have Vietnamese. And so I've grown up eating banh mi my whole life. And I remember, um, I can't remember quite where, but we went somewhere and... Um, on the menu of a restaurant, it wasn't marketed as banh mi, it was marketed as like a Vietnamese inspired <laughs> sandwich, da 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 da. And it, it was basically like gentrified banh mi. And I was sitting there and I'm like, do you guys even know what banh mi is? And oftentimes, um, I've even come across scenarios where people will say that something's banh mi, but there's no bread. And I'm like, don't you know that banh mi, like, the bread is the most important part of the entire meal itself and so it's like it's it's totally like taking these ideas and kind of like watering them down almost mm -hmm. so that it it's more palatable to other people yeah mostly yeah i don't know if y'all i mean i may be aging myself so <laughs> probably am. so at one point <laughs> in time there was this um online persona called thug kitchen mm -hmm. and so they're putting all these recipes out like using let's be honest black slang mm -hmm. and they put out a book people and people were we wow. all assumed that it was a black people behind us because they were speaking how we would normally speak and it came out it was a white couple Ooh. profiting off the language that we've been looked down on to speak the recipes we were told were bad for us they're making like they can call it greens and like things like that I'm like well they said that's i'm from i'm from the south so people say it's bad that's a bad diet mm -hmm. but you have a white couple who are using you know using words that we have been told is not proper English and profiting from that. And they still, they still, if you go to Thug Kitchen now, they're still out there. They're still wow. making money. They're still putting things out. And people know they're white, but they're like, oh, it's kind of like cool. I'm like, no, because if I were to speak the way, I have to code switch to come to work, but right. these people are making money right. using language that, was, that we were told is not proper yeah. and not professional. Yeah. Okay. So for Google Thug Kitchen. <laughs> it, it yeah. sounds like a lot of you know whatever is being taken from different cultures it doesn't honor the history right mm -hmm. so like bun mi th that is french you know settler colonialism mm -hmm. and and how the Vietnamese people have just had to make do with the ingredients they had to survive through like hard times, right? And now it's like, you're taking away that history, you're taking away the the aspect of why people needed to eat that meal, right? Okay. And so even Monica's point of like, you know, um, on social media, you can, and, and Dr. Bryant, right? Like you can change, you can um, make your money and then you could take it all off and continue on, not honor the history at all. Um, and I think that's where, for me, I have to take a step back and be like, oh, is that, like, really, what, 2021? Like, how are we still here, mm -hmm. right? Like, we mm -hmm. should know better. <laughs> and then, like, also on the flip side, like, when we have, like, these inspired dishes, right? On the flip side, I've seen a lot of videos of, like, people, like, trying to share their cultural foods, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe it doesn't look like the standard because, like, there's regional differences or they have their own home, like, history twist on it. And then people, like, especially white people will be like, that's not how you, like, for example, oh there was this um, woman who was, like, making spring rolls and putting, like, other stuff in it that, like, you don't see in, like, a typical restaurant spring roll. And white people were like, this is not how you make a spring roll, but, like, the woman was literally, literally like Vietnamese and like <laughs> you're trying to tell someone <laughs> how to make the food from their own culture mm -hmm. and then you mm -hmm. go and have these inspired dishes like wow it's like amazing and yeah. it's like <laughs> the hypocrisy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 yeah and that literally happened to me in high school actually not with spring rolls 
Um, but it was with, um, oh, it was with a different meal. I can't remember what it was, but I brought it and I, I, I brought it and I ate it and someone asked me what it was and I was like, I think it was, I think it was probably like, um, like a rice plate or something, but I can't remember the Vietnamese name and they were like, that's not that rice plate that you said that it is. That's not how they sell it at, um, <laughs> the Vietnams or whatever that's down the street, the restaurant down the street. And I'm like, okay, you think everyone eats the same type of meal? Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's totally true. It's like police. It's like almost like policing, like what is and isn't when you're not even within that group. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's like what gives you the right to decide that. Mm. Yeah, people put raisins in potato salad. Oh no, <laughs> that's the whole thing, right? You want to class it up, and it's like, mm, I guess, but it's not the thing <laughs> we do for sure. Right, right. Now you're gonna charge five, like fifty bucks for something that my grandmother can make. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Wait, but the, it is that notion of like making it better, making mm -hmm. it classier, mm -hmm. making it high end, right? For profit. Um, and I think that's where, you know, um, with cultural appropriation, right? Like it's for whatever reason, like we see it, some people see it as acceptable, right? Um, but at any time that we have these conversations, it's like, well, I'm honoring the culture then, right? It's always like, um, I'm showing my appreciation, right? So what is the difference between cultural ap appreciation and cultural appropriation? I think appreciation would be like supporting small businesses. Um, I guess like with Hispanic culture, like if you're gonna wear uh, maybe getting like an embroidered top and buying it from a small business rather than going to Party City and getting like a really cheap embroidered mm -hmm. thing. That's another thing. They have a whole <laughs> section at Party City where it's like, oh, like Mexican costumes. But it's like very stereotypical. Like it'll be a literal taco or something or like someone with a poncho. And the people <laughs> in the costumes, like they have the pictures of the people who have the costume right. on. It's always white people too. Mm -hmm. So it, yeah. I, that was my little rant about the party scene. Go on, go on. <laughs> Talk about how it's an issue that these are being called like costumes when yeah. it's like like yeah. cultural like clothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like that's like it's not something you just wear for like fun. There's a lot of history and yeah. like meaning and like we have like whole like festivals and traditions that mm -hmm. revolve around our clothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like just seeing you know, um, like Indian tunics when mm -hmm. it's like a whole Indian outfit right. and they're selling it for, you know, $30, $40 when we know the beading work, you know, and all that takes hours, right? And if you actually go buy it from an Indian store, right, it'll cost you $200, $300 because it takes so long to do that beading. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I look at these, these like, fast fashion online stores or whatever who are who are selling these these items and I'm like you're not paying the the wages that you should be for the labor and secondly like how dare you take it you know like mm -hmm. it's there are certain outfits and colors like um, red is supposed to be worn you know uh, typically you can wear other colors too if you want um, for weddings you know and you'll see like a whole thing and they're like wear it you know to a party and i'm just like really really yeah. don't wear it to prom don't wear it to prom <laughs> that's how i felt about the whole juneteenth thing when it became fashionable last year right. people was like, everyone saw all these juneteenth shirts i'm like well the one do you know the history like the true history right of juneteenth i'm not from texas but i lived in texas for a, for a time before moving to california and so juneteenth as you imagine texas mm -hmm. is, is a thing like it is culturally people understand the significance of it so started like last year you see people like Walmart and Amazon selling Juneteenth oh, shirts. Amazon. Like I, I put a message out on my social media. If you are going to buy anything that says Juneteenth, make sure you buy it from a black owned company. Mm -hmm. Like don't give it to Walmart. Here are the links. Don't give it to, <laughs> don't give it to Amazon. Or yeah. even like you got a cricket machine at your house, make it yourself. Right? <laughs> because it's like that, if you're going to honor these things, give the money back to people who are doing the work. Right. Same thing with Orange Shirt Day, where they were significant for you know residential schools, mm -hmm. and with the horrible things that happened to the indigenous students and children in Canada, 
Walmart's up there were selling orange shirts. I'm like, is that money going to go back to those co- to those to those communities? Yeah. Absolutely not. So yeah. there was a whole campaign like, please don't buy orange shirts for Orange Shirt Day from Walmart. Yeah, it was like it's like you know, it's like Walmart does horrible things to their employees. So please don't, right? Yeah. right? Um, but it's like where it's like the profit is like you don't give back to the community. There's mm-hmm. you're profiting off of other people's hard work. Right. Yeah. And it's and it's and it's also frustrating because as people who knew about Juneteenth before last year, if you were if people were to probably say, Can I get Juneteenth off before that day? But like people will push it back when all of a sudden everyone wants to give you the holiday. Mm. Which I'll take the day off. However <laughs> and everyone's having a day off, but let's once again honor why are we taking this day off? Who right. are we remembering? Mm-hmm. Let's have the true conversation about behind Juneteenth. Yeah. Instead of just putting the shirt on and saying, not everyone's happy. Like, no, that's not how this works. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So going back to the question, part of it is like, are you making excessive profit off of something that is not yours? Mm-hmm. I think people not from culture shouldn't be allowed to sell things from their culture that's my personal stance because like even if they learned the history and like lived in a place for a really long time it's still not really yours like you haven't you don't have that generational like trauma that's like rooted in a lot of these um like especially with like colonialism or imperialism like Mm -hmm. like you don't have that um knowledge and experiences to be able to really like understand what people went through and why some things are significant even mm-hmm. if you like read up on the history it's not the same mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i think there's a way to honor cultures by just showing up mm-hmm. and listening right mm-hmm. and like putting an artifact or a piece of clothing or jewelry right like i think if it's appropriate right like i've had friends come to my wedding right or come to prayers or whatever and I'm like you could borrow this right but it's that kind of thing like and then you give it back Mm -hmm. (laughs) right Mm -hmm. you wear it you're in the space you know we we hold you here um and then when it's done right like we can have a conversation right I I throughout the process explain what the rituals are and you know that's why like my best friend is visiting and we had a prayer at my mom's house last weekend time whatever um (laughs) and you know I was like you could borrow this you know she was like you know we were like talking afterwards she's like I really love the rituals I love just sitting there and listening and learning and seeing how different things are right and I think that's how you engage right that's how you engage with culture that's how you um just mindful of how you show up right Mm -hmm. and I think that like even saying like oh this is a costume right like before we started Chloe was sharing that you went into Halloween spirit. Mm-hmm. Spirit Halloween? Yeah, spirit Halloween. Yeah. And there was like a Native American princess <laughs> costume. And it's just, again, Monica was saying, it's 2021, like, how are we still doing this? Yeah. Um, because, you know, it's not only, it, it's like a real lived identity. Mm-hmm. Um, and so to, to portray it as simply a costume, it contributes also to the erasure of people who do identify as indigenous or do identify as Native American. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that was problematic in itself. I just, <laughs> I could not believe it. I mean, I could believe it. I was disappointed, right. not yeah. surprised, but I don't know. You would think that with all the conversations that have been had over the, even the past five years that people would do better, but corporations don't care. Corporations want yeah. their money. So and that's the, a whole other conversation. And the realization <laughs> that people are going to buy it. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's sure. what really makes there me was, go, damn. <laughs> there was one left on there, and so I was like, okay, so clearly people have bought this. Mm-hmm. So I hope I don't run into them because I'll have some more. <laughs> and it's like so frustrating because I've had, you know, I, I remember I had a, a, a white colleague and say to me, well, black people, you all just have such a rich culture. What? I'm like, well, <laughs> that's, I said, we're going to have this conversation, we're going to have this conversation. Right. I said, well, I identify as a black American, which means my ancestors came to this country not by choice. They didn't immigrate. Right. They were stolen and they came here. And everything that you could lead, or could, what we call culture, we have had to fight for. Mm-hmm. We've had to work for. We were killed for. Mm-hmm. Not given jobs for. Natural hair, mm-hmm. skin, skin tone. The way we cook is because we were left with the scraps. Like I said, so this is not a good like, thing. For us, it is a joy. It is something that we love. It's the reason why we use people, black, black people use brooms and weddings and all that because they weren't they, they couldn't get married in plantations, but they would jump a broom. Like it was it's history behind that, mm-hmm. but it's also pain. Yeah. And so for you to say to me, I want to, I want what you have. Like, no, you don't. You want to be cool. 
I get it. We cool. I get it. <laughs> but it's like you don't want the work that has come yeah. with that, right? When yeah. people show up in spaces, and up until I used to work at Long Beach before I got here, before before coming to Long Beach, I always straightened my hair for every job interview. Wow. My hair is naturally curly. I've never had a relaxer, but I would always I knew I needed to look a certain way yeah. to be taken seriously. And so sometimes to now to see people and particularly white women who can wear braids and wear things like that mm -hmm. and be considered cool is like it's frustrating because yeah. the same braids we grew up wearing and the stories behind the braids of why enslaved people wore braid their hair, the stories, those were those are patterns and stories they told yeah. how to get the freedom. We were told, No, you gotta straighten your hair. You gotta lighten your skin. Yeah. You have to have smaller lips and now people getting fillers in their lips. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, uh. it is, it is, it's like, it is, it's like, you know, some people are frustrated, downright angry. It's like, yeah. I can't show up in my space, but you can look just like me yeah. and be treated a lot better than me. Yeah. Right? But it's so cool. I'm like, yeah, but no, it's work. <laughs> it's like, it's, this is work. Yeah. Right? The, the labor, mm -hmm. right? The time, the energy to constantly be aware of your surroundings and your body and you know how you show up and how people perceive you just from the jump right it's like that constant um like holding that space of like honoring all the things that come with it but then also knowing that um at some point like you can't hold it all mm -hmm. right like i think that's where I get frustrated, right? Like, cause like I, I'm gonna have some words if I see someone <laughs> in that costume, right? But it, it's it's also like, you know, I've gotten to a point where I've seen the seen the really horrible costume, right? Of the geisha girl or mm. the Indian princess or whatever. And a, I'm like, I expect better from you, sister. Like, do better, mm. right? Um, but there's another part of me that's like, I can't keep having this conversation, mm -hmm. right? Because I'm tired. I'm tired of people, um, you know, from Selena Gomez to Gwen Stefani to Madonna, like, put on all the the jewelry and all the, you know, tikkas. They, they represent stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And every, every pop culture artist, has, you know, that's done it, and, like, people just, like, celebrate it. Yeah. You know, that's where I'm like, it's, first of all, like, you're, that artist is doing something from another artist, right? That's mm -hmm. not even original. Mm -hmm. But I'm just tired. Yep. Yeah, and it's weird because they get praised for it, almost like, oh, like, she's representing us. But it's like, no, that's a white woman. Like, that's <laughs> yeah. not, she's not part of the culture. Like, she didn't really take time to educate herself on, like, the significance yeah. of, like, what she's wearing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, um... Like, otherwise this shows up as, like, YouTubers, right? Like, people will, like, go to countries mm -hmm. and learn the Travel culture. Travel vlogs. <laughs> and then they make money off of the YouTube videos. And people are like, oh my god, these people, like... But also, it's, like, s oftentimes people are, like, doing this as, like, missionary work. And, like, you're mm. continuing the patterns of, like, imperialism. Like, we don't want this here and also you're taking our culture and sharing with other people in a way that we may not want you to right mm -hmm. yeah yeah i was gonna say i remember i saw casey musgraves i think that's her name mm -hmm. a white woman yeah. a white yeah. singer mm -hmm. <laughs> I have um, no idea who that is. She's in country. She's country. Here. She's, country. <laughs> she's a country girl. Okay. Country she's girl. country. She's okay. Yeah, she's got big wigs. Um, <laughs> but I remember uh, seeing someone repost her on their story. And in that picture of her, she was wearing an ao yai. And an ao yai oh. is like, it's a Vietnamese clothes. It's Vietnamese oh, yes, clothes. Yes, and yes, you're yes. supposed to wear oh. pants underneath. You're yes. supposed to wear typically white pants. And she was just... She didn't have pants on, so it was just the ao yai, and then the, the, the pants, slit, yeah, yeah, the pants are on purpose, so there's, like, a high slit here, and that's what the pants are for, and yeah. um, there were a lot of people, I mean, I was upset, too, I was very much, like, you know, why are you hypersexualizing, like, my cultural clothing, mm -hmm. um, and that also, whenever I saw the costume at Spirit, um, yeah. it was also a super sexualized, um, yeah. Yeah. like, a native american princess costume and mm -hmm. i think that's that also leads to another conversation of you know how a lot of people will look at these cultures and also sexualize them in mm -hmm. very 
inappropriate ways. Um, and traditionally, it's done to women of color. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Um, that they will take things that is ours or think that our mothers and our grandmothers, you know, make it a midriff mm -hmm. or, you know, put a slit in it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have the conversation about consent and costumes, right? Mm -hmm. In the perfect world, you should wear whatever you want to wear without anyone assuming because you are dressed a certain way you're asking for something. Mm -hmm. However, it puts, when, women, when we go out in our traditional garbs, it does put us in a bad position because folks have already sexualized that. Mm -hmm. So you can be cut from head to toe and people will still not, now because, you know, Party City and Halloween Spirit pops up on every corner come mm -hmm. September <laughs> has, you know, turned, you know, that outfit into a midriff and some booty shorts. It's mm -hmm. like, okay, now it's, it's, they're asking for that. It's an invitation and it's never right. an invitation. Okay. Right. Make it very clear. I know which camera to look at. <laughs> it is never an invitation, right. no matter what a human has in their body. It is never an invitation. Yeah. Always ask. Um, but it does make it harder, I think, sometimes when you see people like the whole twerking thing, it's like, I'm from Miami, booty shaking town, we love booty shaking music, right? And so to see people not getting praised for this dancing that people turned up, turn it up and, and, and in certain, I'm not from the continent, but from the, in the continent of Africa, that's part of some traditional dancing. Yeah. So now when you see them in these spaces and doing traditional mm -hmm. dancing, like, oh, are they twerking? Like, no, they're not yeah. twerking. Yeah. Yeah. This is a, this is part of their culture, it's part of their story. And now yeah. someone's taking something that you would wear your, on your wedding day mm -hmm. or yeah. to a very special moment and now it's now part hot girl yeah and now hot it's, girl daishiki yeah. it's like, <laughs> it's, like what's happening yeah it's totally like it it definitely leaves like a really a gross feeling at least for me it left a really gross feeling having to see that and also whenever it was prom season there are a few girlies who were wearing aoyais too and I was like, do you even know what this is or what you're supposed to wear it for? I mean, like, if I was to grill you on this right now, would you be able to answer any mm -hmm. of the questions that I have? Um, yeah, that was a whole other conversation, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've had, I've had conversations with people who are wearing, you know, henna and the traditional bangles, and I've, you know, been like, oh, like, do you know what that represents? And they've been able to be like, yeah, you know, I recently went to a wedding and or I just got married to a, a person from this culture and you know this is what it means and this is what I'm learning and da 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 and I'm like oh well welcome mm -hmm. and you know like good luck <laughs> um, <laughs> because there are certain times when especially with like marriages and weddings mm -hmm. and stuff right when especially if you're if your partner is outside of the culture that, mm -hmm. that you've never been part of right like um, it is sometimes you have to follow a certain custom. So I understand that, right? Um, but I think you're right. Like, if you're just doing it for the aesthetics and someone goes, do you know what this represents for me, right? Mm -hmm. Because it is a very deeply personal thing for people. Yeah. Um, and if they ask you and you don't have an answer, right, and you're at a music festival or whatever wearing mm -hmm. a headdress or bangles and mm -hmm. bindis or whatever or, or a poncho, right? Like, I'm, I'm going to be like... Do better now. <laughs> Don't go to Coachella then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And also, I think, like, as we were talking, there's, whenever it comes to appropriation versus appreciation, I think there's also an aspect of invitation. So, mm. like, for example, when you go to a wedding, if you're invited to partake right. in said culture, then I think it, it's more so appreciation than it is appropriation because it's not like you're going into this space and being like, teach me. And I'm yeah. gonna use it, and yeah. this is mine now. It's I'm like, gonna profit off right. of it. Right, it's like I'm gonna okay. make myself look cool. Right. right, yeah. It's very much okay. I've been invited to mm -hmm. join this space. I'm gonna like tread cautiously and be mindful and intentional and thoughtful about yeah. the way that I move within this space. Um, I think, I think that could be possibly where the line is um, a little bit more clear. But mm -hmm. I think whenever you feel entitled to something, that's whenever you should definitely reflect on you yeah. know why do you feel entitled to take part of this culture or take aspects of this culture for yourself yeah i guess you know we all represent different parts of campus <laughs> um <laughs> not all of it but some parts right and so i guess like how do we create spaces that you know um where we want our campus to be like we appreciate culture 
and we do not support appropriating culture, language, food, right? All the different aspects. Like, what would you like SJSU to like do besides the "My Culture Is Not a Costume" <laughs> campaign? I was say something right? like this. <laughs> um, you know, what else would would you all like to see? I mean, I'm a I love workshops. I'm a big workshop girl. I know that sometimes <laughs> it can be hard to get people to come. But I always, I, I think there's so much value in conversations just like this and being mm-hmm. candid. I feel like even right now I'm learning a lot of, I'm, I'm learning a lot as we speak right now. And so I feel like having conversations and creating space for those conversations mm-hmm. is one of the big steps that we can definitely take as a campus community. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm an office of diversity, equity, and inclusion. So our job is we're the workshop people. We're the right. don't do that police, right? right. So we're the, <laughs> we do it, we, hopefully we do it in a way where for, we want people to come to us and ask, right? You know, when I, I mean, my position, granted, I, my job, I always did. My job is black people. But my job is all the people, right? So if you can't catch, catch if you catch me and you want, if you really want to have this conversation, my job on this campus is to help you tr- figure out if you're doing too much. <laughs> you know, I like running by me. Let's let's. Yeah. What are you thinking about? Like in the conversation I had today, we had a session today about someone asked about bystanders. I'm like, well, you have, well, you are holding position of power and privilege. Your job is to intervene. Mm-hmm. So in in this space, positionality wise, I have this is a privilege I have. So when I'm in spaces and I see things happening, or people are talking about an idea. Like let's have a luau. Wait, whoa, well, why are we having a luau? Mm-hmm. Now, yeah. you want to, do you want to just wear a tropical shirt? Mm-hmm. Or are you trying to have a luau? Yeah. That part of my job is to have that conversation. Yeah. But if you know, same thing. It's not always when it's safe. And obviously, when it's safe, and you feel safe to intervene, and you see people having these like, hmm, that sounds kind of sketch. I don't mm-hmm. know if we need to have like, are we? Do we really want? Do we really need to have? You know, a gangster party. Like, what does that mean? Like, <laughs> are we talking about Bonnie and Clyde? Like, what are we what talking about, right? That? So <laughs> yeah. I think our job, my officer's job, is to be the educators. In this space to come in when you don't, when you don't want to have the conversation, we'll do, we'll be the, the people who have the conversation, right? Mm-hmm. We're the people you call and say, "Hey, I feel like something may have happened. I'm not comfortable. Can you can you walk me, can you walk through this and mm-hmm. say make sure I'm not you know too yeah. far off base?" And then we'll, sometimes it's like, "Do you want us to intervene, or you just want the tools to do it yourself?" That's what we do in ODI. Mm-hmm. So that's the space we want. That's the space we hold, mm-hmm. hopefully, to help people do that. Honestly, just like people putting their money where their mouth is, mm. like you know, actually investing in resources to help uplift these communities, and also just, I guess like, I'm losing my words. <laughs> 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 um, I have this, um, like talking about things in a way like there's a lot of like we're talking a lot right now about like. Uh, cost, uh, like culture not being a costume mm-hmm. in terms of like like ethnicities mm-hmm. but like there's also like a lot like there are other like cultures that are not mm-hmm. like based around like uh, like where you're from but mm-hmm. rather like like trans communities like mm-hmm. during Halloween there's a lot of like cross dressing that's mm-hmm. like but like also like gender is not a costume not in that way like mm-hmm. gender I- gender expression is a performance right but like this isn't like something for you to just be like to make fun of because oftentimes like guys will like wear a cheerleader mm-hmm. uniform like look at me it's like also like like diminishing like femininity and mm-hmm. like making it like this it's like it's not okay yeah yeah i know like some i don't think they've done it here but i've seen like on social media where like frats will have like a gender bender party and they'll do like Oh, like the boys will dress in like feminine clothing for a night and then they just take that off and they just go on with their lives but they won't really like be able to face like the struggles of being a trans person or Mm -hmm. just stuff i think it's also like these costumes or parties right you pick the stereotypical traits Mm -hmm. of femininity there's nothing wrong with dressing as a feminine person or a masculine person but I think what bothers me is when people take the worst or exaggerated aspects of a characteristic mm-hmm. in society yeah. and decide to turn it into a performance, right? Like, I'm going to be, you know, in heels and act super, you know, uh, 
sexual and I'm just like do you is that what you think all women are like yeah. <laughs> like is that how you're, you're telling on yourself yeah, yeah like you know like I, that's where I like there's nothing wrong with being feminine right like if you feel inspiration if you get in touch with that do it like by oh. all means let's celebrate it right but if you start to put it on as a performance right and uh, a costume that's when again we're gonna have some words I love that mm-hmm. I love that <laughs> phrase now <laughs> that's what I think. Yeah. Read. <laughs> and when you, like, and like you said earlier before we started recording talked about sex work sex work to me is work sex work is work yeah you know mm-hmm, sure. um and which on we, people are against sex work but then on Halloween they'll be like let me be a hooker right let me be a stripper I'm like well you just talked down to these people yesterday mm-hmm. yeah. who are trying to make a living the best way they can out of honestly a wonderful way right yeah. and now but today you're going to be them but then tomorrow yeah. you're going to be trying to write a bill right. to get strip clubs kicked out of your town right exactly so like what is like what is that yeah so it's like, like you know. people who hate on only fans and then they're like mm-hmm. i'm going to be a sexy nurse for halloween and it's like <laughs> yeah <laughs> what <laughs> yeah i mean i think the math is not math yeah exactly <laughs> 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 um i think that you know some people have said like oh but this brings me joy right like dressing in this way or like it it allows me to like express myself but it's like how I guess whenever I hear that like I'm always like are you trying to make this into like a freedom of expression and speech concept because like there's also common sense, right? Like, there's also, like, consequences to actions. Um, so, yeah, I just, that's where my head is also sitting at. Like, when people are like, but I, you know, like, there's nothing wrong with the way I'm dressed. I'm like, to you, right? Mm-hmm. But we are in a community. We don't live in a bubble. Mm-hmm. I, think, um, I think it also shows a lack of creativity. Like, people, when you have to put on... Yeah. Think about um, I don't know if y'all know who Julian. I think her name is Juliet Hoff or Julian Hoff. Yes. She dressed I'm like she dressed like Crazy Eyes from Lawrence's New Black, mm. Mm. and she had the hair, she had the orange jumpsuit, and then she covered her face, and she was in blackface. Mm-hmm. So oh. this white woman's walking around in blackface, and it's like people who watch Orange and New Black we know who that character is. Yeah. You could have done that without putting a blackface on. Right. We know who Beyonce is. So if you put the whole homecoming outfit on with mm-hmm. that black onesie from the singles ladies with the, with the wig. Mm-hmm. And the sparkles. And the sparkles. We <laughs> know exactly, like, it shows, like, if you had to slather your face and your body in black paint for us to know who that is, that, that shows a lack of creativity on your end. Yeah. And then people like to, also like to compare, and for, especially when black people cosplay, like, oh, they're, they're, they're Sailor Moon. Like, Sailor Moon is not real. Like, yeah. that's how that conversation right? <laughs> Yeah. That's right. how that conversation Sailor Moon is, I mean, I would love to see Sailor Moon walking down the street, but Sailor Moon is not my neighbor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but even then, I have never seen, I know a lot of people who cosplay, I have never seen, like, well, that person's blue. That person's, really? Do you know a blue person? <laughs> like, that's that's the argument you see on yeah. social media. Well, they dress like a blue uh, avatar. I'm like, but that's a blue, per- that's a blue thing that does, does, does not sit next to you every day. Right. There's also, like, it's not, like, Beyonce is a black woman, right? And if you want to dress up as Beyonce in a particular outfit, right, you're honoring maybe, like, the performance, Mm -hmm. right? And, like, saying, this is my idol. But as soon as you start putting on blackface and talking with an accent, right, that's when you're, like... black accent. Right. (laughs) That's when I'm, like, you're not, you're not ever going to be her like what do you this is this is a failure <laughs> you know, like, i dream every day <laughs> um so i also want to get to some of these questions that are frequently asked um about cultural appropriation right things like that so i thought maybe we could go around and have some of these questions that came up I did not realize so much time passed by. I thought it's been like 10 minutes. No, that's what happens when you're having a conversation. It's been 40 minutes? So this question (laughs) is, does cosplay fall under cultural appropriation? Oh, we've been talking about this. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it depends on the type of cosplay. Um, Mm -hmm. Like you were saying, Avatar, I feel like that is like a blue figure whereas if <laughs> it's really. like a white person trying to cosplay of someone from like a different ethnicity or a different group that they're not necessarily a part of 
then that would be cultural appropriation. And it also depends on how they depict that. Mm-hmm. Like you were saying, the exaggerated stereotypes. Yeah. I think that falls under cultural appropriation for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I also do think that, like, even if you're not white, right, if you're from any other gender or race mm-hmm. and you want to play a character, because mostly cosplays are characters mm-hmm. from a video or a movie yeah. or comic book, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's a way to do it, right? So, like, if I wanted to be Storm from X-Men, right, I would put on the white wig and the cape and stuff, but I wouldn't paint my face, right? I hope people would understand that I'm trying to be Storm (laughs) right, right, from X-Men, right? Um, And I think that should be enough. And if if people don't get it, then you're like, I'm Storm, right? Like, it's okay to say who you are. Um, Yeah, yeah. Here, I'll pass this to you <laughs> ahead of time. Does cultural consent only apply to costumes? Mm-hmm. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> like, when, like, I think part of it is like, like there are different ways to consent, I suppose. Like if like when we're talking about food, like if someone like put the recipe out there and the and they also have like some ask, like maybe you share your own story of like mm. when you make it. Yeah. Like just honoring those requests. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Agree. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't have said it better. Um, yeah, I think there's definitely again like the invitational mm-hmm. aspect of things. Um so yeah, I don't think it just applies to just costumes. It it spans across many different venues. Is that the word? Question mark. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. It's also like know the time and place. I suppose mm-hmm. like a lot of people talk about like um, like like speaking black, right? Like oh my black prince is okay. It's like well then only do it with your friends. Like other people may not be okay with it. Read the room also. Right? Yeah. Yes. Like, <laughs> Sometimes room. I wonder. I'm like, yeah. do you not feel the vibes right now? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that vibes. Right. And it, it gets interesting because sometimes I notice people switch and they talk to me sometimes. Like this black scent comes out. I'm like, what is that? Like, what, 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 where did that come from? Hey, girlfriend, no, I'm not your girlfriend. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> it's awkward for everybody. Yeah. Okay. Why should we care about cultural appropriation? Oh basic empathy and compassion for your other your fellow human beings Mm -hmm. respect but also part of it is just like you're magnifying the issues we already have like when you take these things and make it okay you're not you're still not changing the fact that it's worse for us and in some cases when you make it like a cool thing like it it gets worse for the communities Mm -hmm. that have these traditions and have Mm -hmm. these ways of doing things and it's like and then somehow like it ends up like well white people do it and then like someone else does it from a different culture and it's like you're stealing this from white people I'm like this is not how it works <laughs> <laughs> and I think it, I think it makes the folks who originated this and who basically own who own it it makes it it waters it down there's a level mm-hmm. of erasure um once again I'm age myself so it's this movie called Stumpy Yard and in Stumpy Yard <laughs> oh, yeah, the characters yeah. are you know they're at HBCU, they're stepping. Mm-hmm. I'm part of a historically black fratern- um, sorority. Um, I'm an AKA. And when it first came out, my friends and I, we all went. People were super excited. We had like our letters and stuff. Like, yeah, let's do it. Mm-hmm. And so we went, we watched it. We had a good time because we could relate to it. Mm-hmm. And as we're walking out, like, these three white girls come up to my friends that were Kappas, so they're in their red letter jackets. Can you do what they just happened in a screen, in a movie? Literally wanting mm-hmm. them to perform in the middle of the movie theater. And you know, my wonderful my male for the, they were very calm about it mm-hmm. I was a different I wasn't Dr. Brian then I was like, what are we about to do like I'm like this is and like, like we're not a show right like I think they gave you the gift of the movie to watch get right. the inside but this is not a show right this is not what we do like it, we had to earn the right to do that right and so and that was I just couldn't believe at the build of the movie theater, you want these these black men on the show for you. Right. It reminds me of like Black Panther when that movie came out. Right. Like it was such a representation of seeing a world where black culture was celebrated. Right. And it was to see a a, a superhero and like the 
the the family figures and like the you know the culture mm-hmm. was just there right and i think when um people were protesting it i was like what are you really mad about because everything <laughs> else is for you mm-hmm. right everything else is about you every other space caters to you is it because the performance wasn't for you mm-hmm. right it wasn't about you it didn't center you right like it was unfamiliar and comfortable like what is it let's question that right mm-hmm. um and so yeah that's where i sit i'm like some things aren't for you mm-hmm. and you have to be okay for with it <laughs> yeah it goes back to the entitlement yeah you know aspect yeah. of things like why do you feel entitled yeah because i remember like even like south asian folks right <laughs> like we're like well you know does it really matter right um and all this and all this other stuff and i was just like you know you didn't have to make a comment mm-hmm. it wasn't for you mm-hmm. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that's how you show up yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay what about freedom of speech and expression people who want to express there's consequences to your actions. Yeah, like, you you have freedom to do what you want. You also have freedom of facing the aftermath. Right. As a former director of student conduct, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's my former life of to be separate, to take this role. That is a conversation I'll have with students all the time. It's like, you have yeah. the right to, you know, but you need to be prepared for the consequence of the, those actions. Mm-hmm. And there's a line where we can't protect you. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, you choose to wear... Uh, Confederate flag T-shirt. You can wear we want, we want women, but understand that people, the way people receive you, is also their right. Yeah. And so that is just how you have to, that. That is just the space you have to hold. You are standing mm-hmm. in that. Do what you got to do. Yeah. Just like me, I work for I work for state institution. I have the right to post whoever I want, honestly, on my social media. Yeah. But understanding that may impact me getting a job in the future. That may impact me getting promoted on this campus. Mm-hmm. Technically, it shouldn't. But I know <laughs> I'd be right. realistic. Like, right. there are consequences to the actions. And let's be honest: when you hold certain identities, those consequences are bigger. Mm-hmm. So, unfortunately, we have to move a little different than other people. Yeah. Let's put this very simply: like, if you chose to stay up until four a.m. <laughs> and you have class at like seven <laughs> you're gonna have to face the consequences that you're gonna be tired as fuck and may fall asleep in class yeah. and you don't mm-hmm. get to control that mm-hmm. yeah and you're not gonna take the time to stop the class starting yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. so you can't ask the professors like hey like can we change this 7 a.m to like a 12 p.m <laughs> right. mm-hmm. i also yeah. feel like when people say oh freedom of speech sometimes i feel like it's such a cop-out Mm-hmm. It's like really like that's the only thing that you can base your whole entire argument off of is freedom of speech. Like, mm-hmm. don't you feel kind of lame? Like, <laughs> or, <laughs> but also we don't understand the way the First Amendment was written, mm-hmm. right? It talks about government stuff, so yeah, it doesn't talk about private companies. So yeah. your private employer can do what they want to do. A mm-hmm. private a private business, unfortunately, they can you know there are consequences. So one thing about us, we don't like to know the law. So I encourage you actually read the First Amendment and see. <laughs> exactly what it covers because you know think about twitter twitter's a private company they want to remove you from twitter that's it that's their right mm-hmm. right so yeah let's think about i also think that you know um as a campus i would love to move away from this whole notion of freedom of speech and freedom of expression and all this right like yes express your thoughts be in a space where you can learn and engage in dialogue right and be ready to, um, you know, not come out with facts. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying, like, be able to have, like, empathy in a space, right? If someone is saying that you've caused harm and pain, no matter what your intention was, right? Like, you've made an impact, right? And really reflect on what we want our community to be about, right? Um I don't want to live in a world where I say, hey, you've hurt me or, you know, you've hurt a group of people and they're clearly telling you and you go, well, it's my right. I could do it. Mm-hmm. Right. Like have some some eat that humble pie and be like, oh, let me learn. Right. Mm-hmm. Let me show up. Let me do the work. Right. Because we would not be a place of higher learning if we didn't do that. Right. This is your time to experiment and make mistakes 
and meet new people and try things out but also there come there needs to be a level of learning right and i think that's kind of been lost in the last four or five years um but i want to get back to that right as a campus as a world we're so divided right we're just always yes no right good bad politics whatever it may be and i'm like at some point right like there's accountability there's intention, there needs to be learning, right? And if those are the basic things, like, can we just try? Can we just try it on, right? right. Um, so that's that's where I sit, yeah. yeah. Honestly, if I had to choose one thing out of everything, I would say community care. Mm -hmm. Like everything just comes down to like, really trying to be there for each other. Mm -hmm. And like, yes, you can mess up, like, we understand that you may not have intended to hurt someone, but like, let us help you like move on mm -hmm. and like be better. Yeah, and that also means that the community cares for you too, right? Mm -hmm. There's not just like you messed up, you're out, right? There needs to be a period of time where everyone takes a minute, goes to their separate corners, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, this is where my therapist stuff is coming out. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone takes a minute, right? We examine our feelings and our thoughts, and then we come together and we figure it out because mm -hmm. it's messy. You're talking about restorative justice. Yes, right? exactly. Harm has been caused. The person ideally who caused the harm wants to repair the harm. Right. In part, but all people always forget the biggest piece of that, though, is the community piece, like you said. Yeah. Repairing harm, we, we as a community are welcoming you, are reintegrating you back into community. Granted, sometimes. That means separation, right? But it's still letting that person know there is a space for you. Well, you're welcome here. Mm -hmm. Once you own up to what you've done and you figure out what you, have, we as a collective tell you what you need to do, yeah, to repair that harm. So, yeah, yeah. Well, I think on that note, <laughs> um, thank you to all of our <laughs> wonderful <laughs> guests. Um, how can people connect to to you all? I mean, also to like AS and ODI oh, and yeah. I resources. I'm like, 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 Feel free to email me uh, at chloe.kramer, C-H-L-O-E dot C-R-A-M-E-R -E at sjsu.edu if you have any questions about um, associate students, if you're interested in joining any committees on campus. We have a lot of really great opportunities for student engagement, student advocacy, student leadership. Um, so if any of that sounds interesting to you, feel free to reach out to me there. And the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, we are an admin 104, first floor. We are there every day. Um, <laughs> you have no you know, choice. Um, our email address is diversityoffice at sjsu.edu. Um, once again, we do drop-ins, questions, consultations, workshops, trainings for faculty, staff, and students, and student orgs. But we also, that's where our bias incident resource team lives. So we, if you experience a bias incident, you can report that to our office. You can tell us who you are or anonymously. But I'm also, I am Patience Bryant, the only Patience in the CSU, 22 <laughs> campuses. So Patience, like the word, dot Bryant, like Kobe Bryant, at SJSU.edu. Yeah. And um, to connect with us, you can send us the email at mosaic at SJSU.edu. Follow us on all of the things. We'll have all the, <laughs> the information in the doobly-doop. Um, <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> subscribe and follow or like whatever. Like, like and subscribe. Right. Like and subscribe. And hit, that follow, hit that notification button. Right. Yeah. Okay, see, thank you. All right, bye. bye. <laughs>